Hey y'all, I'm Patrick Haggerty from ROI Training, and in today's video, I want to show you how to create a monitoring dashboard. Now I have a file of useful Google Cloud links, and you can find this file over here at roi-links.com slash gcplinks. Um, in it, I have a subsection on Kubernetes. Um, in the subsection on Kubernetes, besides general Kubernetes information, you can also find a link to Google's microservice demo. That is the demo I have actually loaded into my Kubernetes cluster, and I'm going to be using that demo in a Kubernetes cluster uh, as I create this video. So if you're thinking monitoring and monitoring dashboards, again, in my links file, I have a whole subsection on using monitoring. If you haven't seen my videos on researching metrics or the metrics explorer, you might want to watch those before continuing with this video. Anyway, so if you're going to be using the dashboard designer, um, there's a couple articles. There's a good one on Medium you can find. There's a good one on Google Cloud that you can find on how that works. So again, I have my cluster configured. I have deployed into my cluster Google's microservice demo. Google's microservice demo is actually a series of different services and different pods that get deployed into Kubernetes. And every single one of them actually specifies how much memory and how much CPU does it need while it works. A resource request is a way of saying, this is how much memory and CPU I need. A resource limit is an upper end limit. By the way, the CPU specifications are in millicores. A thousand millicores is one vCPU is what you're looking at. So if I go into my monitoring section of Google Cloud, that's about halfway down this list, that's where I'll find my dashboards. And I'll see a series of out of the box dashboards. But what if I wanted to build one specific for this application? Okay, to build a new dashboard, you can hit the create dashboard up at top and you will get the dashboard designer that will allow you to build it. Up here in the upper left corner, left-hand corner, this is where the name of the dashboard is. So maybe this is my um, storefront status. Um, or how about storefront load? That all sounds good. So there's my storefront load that I'm going to build. Now, when you're constructing your chart or you're constructing your dashboard, by default, you have this mosaic mode, and it's kind of a snap to the grid sort of model. Down the left-hand side, I see all of my various things I could snap to the grid. So again, if I wanted to, for example, I could just drop in a text component. And in my text component, I could say, you know, title, sort of load, you know, and maybe I'm going to do uh, pod CPU server uh, cluster. CPU or something, you know, so again, I can set that up to read whatever I want to. And of course, if that's all it's going to read, it really doesn't need to be that big. And again, remember what I said about the snap to. So again, you, know, you can kind of drag this and drop it so it'll snap to whatever size you want it to be. And you might have to play with it a little bit to see what's going to work for that particular control. Now I'm ready to actually put a couple of charts in here. Again, creating charts primarily this is just like building a chart with the Metrics Explorer. And even the things that may not look like a chart, like I'll get, let's do a gauge as well. Um, the way the, start the, the chart is constructurally specified, uh, uh, the chart structurally specified, it, it's very similar to the Metrics Explorer, right? So for example, let me just do a classic line chart here. Now when I click the line chart, notice it drops a line chart in here, and it just sort of dumps some default information in it, okay? So how about this chart is going to be pod, uh, 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 let's say container, CPU, um, uh, request, utilization. Okay, so maybe that's what I want it to be titled. 
container CPU request utilization. I'm going to come down here, and again, I'm assuming that you've done some research on your metrics. Um, if you look at the monitoring section in my links file, I have uh, a, a couple of links that talk about metrics and how they work. And you could drill down through that available metrics. And you'd find, if I want to look at containers, again, first off, let me switch to my resource. I've got a lot of standard resource types in here. Okay, so what am I looking at? I'm looking at Kubernetes engine, but not the cluster, but the container. And if I go to container, now I'll get metrics. And if I go in there and look, okay, so I have request utilization and limit utilization. So again, what percentage am I using of my upper limit and what percentage am I using of my request? Usually it'll be operating within the request. So I'm going to do request utilization. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So I do request utilization. It drops in the utilization. But again, it's actually dropping in the utilization for every single pod and every single container running in my server. So I got to find a way to identify, you know, the pods I want. Filter out or filter in the pods I want. Notice right here, there's a filter. Now, one thing in this example from Google that you'll notice is that all of your containers are actually named server. Every one of them. Right, so the containers are all named server, so that's actually something I could key off of. So let me go back over here, and I'm gonna say, I wanna do a filter, and how about we include all of the pods where the container name is equal to server, all right? So if I do my container name equal to server, and I apply that, aha. Okay, so now I have the pods Notice front end, currency, that's all the parts of my uh, service that I have running. Now, I'm not so sure that naming all your containers the exact same thing is going to be the easiest way to filter, but again, the concept is good. So when we do our filters, notice you pick something you can filter by, right? Pick something that you can filter by, including user metadata labels is actually available, right? So what can you filter by? Um, the comparison, if it's equal, not equals, it's straight that. If it's equals tilde, e not equals tilde, notice those are regular expressions. So if you had like a naming scheme, maybe they're not all server, but they've got something in common, I could use that, right? Okay, so good deal. So now I've got a chart that shows all my pod utilization. Wow, look at that one. My payments really had a spike at this one particular moment in time. Okay, that's exactly the kind of thing I want to look for. Now let's go ahead and add another chart to our dashboard. I can just click out of that one chart and it'll show me my list of chart types. Let's add a gauge. Yeah, here's a good gauge right there. And let's add a gauge to show the overall cluster CPU utilization. All right, so how about cluster CPU utilization, right? So let me go ahead and set that up. It's already doing VM instance, this is easy. It's already doing CPU utilization, that's easy. The only thing is I have more than one virtual machine inside of this environment, right? So let me add a filter here. Uh, I wanna add all the virtual machines where the uh, instance name of the virtual machine starts with GKE demo. Right now, uh, let me do a little bit different thing here. So if I hit the, I gotta hit the, hit the pencil icon if I'm gonna type in my own thing. GKE demo, and it's a regular expression, so then it's dash, and then regular expression dot star, followed by some characters. Right, followed by some characters. Aha! So now it's not all of my machines; it's just my cluster machines. Now let me add a couple other details since this is a. Um, gauge, you have a couple options, and I can actually set up some visual references here. So I'm going to say if we're over 60% utilization, let's say that's a warning above that. And if we're over 80%, let's say that's a danger for that. So notice now we've got some extra colorization that it adds in. Whenever you're done editing your dashboard, all you have to do is toggle this edit switch up here. 
Notice the green cloud chuck means it's saved. It works kind of like a Google document. It's auto saving behind the scenes. When you take it out of edit mode, there you go. So now if I go back to my list of dashboards, I'll see the Google created dashboards and I'll see my storefront load dashboard that I just created. Click on it. It'll take me in. It'll show my storefront load. Hmm, I'm not sure why it's telling me my cluster is red, right? Oh, let me hit the edit button. And again, now again, if you want to go back and investigate any of your settings, you could do that. Ah, uh, danger above 80. Mm, okay. Nice visual representation of the problem, but again, ah, uh, there we go. So that looks a little bit better. So anytime you want to go into edit mode, just toggle that switch. Excellent. So creating a dashboard in Google Cloud. I'm Patrick Haggerty with ROI Training, and I hope you've enjoyed this video.